Hey, White Bear Nan here. Hey, Beth, what's going on? Oh, the interview went well. That's great to hear. Oh, they want you to come in for a mock lesson? Oh, that's, uh, that's a good piece of the puzzle. Yeah, I would totally put a video together for that. All right, look for it, kid. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right, Beth, teacher, new one. She just got a mock lesson. Let's talk about it. everybody, White Bear Nan here. Today we're talking about the mock lesson. For those of you who don't know, the mock lesson is part of the interview process for teachers. It is the part of the process where the teacher actually gets to demonstrate that they can teach a classroom full of kids. So today I want to give you some tips for that. I had my share of observations, I had my share of teaching them, watching them, being a part of the the student body, a lot of different takeaways. So today, uh, I'm gonna give you at least 10 of them. So stay tuned, here we go. Okay, first, I mean, as with any interview, you need to show up early. Not too early, but show up early, because especially with teaching, you know, it depends on your content there. You might have to set something up, you might have to set up a whiteboard, a projector, you might have a lab, like uh, an activity you wanna do. So definitely be mindful, you wanna show up early enough to handle that stuff. I've had teachers show up an hour early, that's a little too early, <laughs> but definitely be there prompt. Like, I, you know, I, you know, that should be without saying, you definitely want to be showing up for any job interview early. Okay, number two, dress appropriately. Again, you know, a no brainer for job interviews, but it's really important as a teacher. I need you to dress appropriately for your position. Now, it seems that there is one caveat to that. If you're a, a PE teacher, a phys ed teacher, you guys like to show up in sneakers and jumpsuits or whatever. That's fine. That lesson should definitely re reflect movement, jumping around, or something a PE teacher has show. But it's always nice. I, I, I'm one of those old school guys. I like to see you dressed up. Um, I think it's, it's something that um, shows you're a professional and you take the time to take care of yourself. So definitely dress appropriately. Okay, my third tip. If you're at the mock lesson piece, you've already gone through the interview part. Be prepared that you might have to interview for with somebody else again. Somebody that didn't make the first interview. You might have to interview with somebody directly after your mock uh, lesson. So just be prepared that you might have to interview. It shouldn't be anything you couldn't handle if you've gotten to this point. Um, but just kind of have that on your, on the, on your radar that they might sit you down with, hey, you know, a great, great lesson. We want you now to sit down with this person. It has happened. It definitely happens. So be prepared for it. My fourth one. Now, this has a lot to do with the actual lesson that you're going to teach, but come prepared with everything. Come prepared with the lesson plan. Come prepared with copies, the materials. Don't leave anything up to chance. If you know in advance and you have some heads up that you're going to be teaching, in, say, an art class or a science class, or you need some sort of manipulatives and you know they're in the class, ahead of time that's great but if your lesson is going to be based on those materials make sure you have a backup make sure they're in your car whatever it is that you cannot count on the school having that that lesson stuff for you so that's why you want to make sure that if you do always make sure you have copies if you're going to give stuff out to the students make sure you you have copies for everyone don't leave it up to that moment and that that at that few minutes you have right before the class for somebody to be scrambling to make you copies. Come fully prepared with everything. The other thing with this is if, say for example, you, they say you're gonna, they're gonna have the materials and you show up and then for some reason they don't, roll with it, figure out, have a plan B. One of the things about teachers, you know, I want my teachers to be unflappable. If something changes, you're able to roll with the punches and, and, and change accordingly. So um, that is one of the things that you kind of want to be on the look for. Just be aware that you always want to have a plan B. The other thing to that also is if you know what the, the teacher is working on when you come to do the mock lesson, that would be great because that kind of lets you kind of jump into what the kids in, this, in the class are already working on. So if it's one of those situations where you're doing a mock lesson for a class, try and get, what, get an idea of what the teacher is working on so that it has some sort of basis for the kids and it's just not some random lesson that these kids are being exposed to. Because that will kind of be the scenario. Which leads me into tip number five. What scenario are you walking into? In my experience, I've gotten to see and, and 
set up a lot of different types of mock lessons. I've had students, you know, the teacher set up the lesson with their students so that the, the, te the new teacher would just kind of come in and do a lesson with them. I've pulled students out of the hallway and say, hey, I need you to come sit here and do be pretend students for this teacher. They're doing a mock lesson. I've had adults be the students for the mock lesson. I've had the little cafeteria lady be one of the students. It, it, you do not know what sort of situation you're going to walk into. I've done, I've been the student. I've had a situation where I've been the only student. So there's a lot of different scenarios where you're going to walk into that you're going to wind up presenting your lesson to whatever. Just be prepared to teach whatever it is you've come to teach, regardless of what the student is. That is, the, that is just one of the, the uh, things that we're really going to want you to be prepared for. Tip number six, be prepared that the administrators, and I'm not a big fan of this, but I do know some administrators will do this. Um, they will put certain like plants in the audience, so to speak. Um, they're going to make sure that there's a class clown, that there's going to make sure that there's something that's going to happen. Or this might not even be a, a, a thing where it was set up. It could have been you have a, t you have a class and you have some nightmare kid in there and he starts causing a ruckus. Like, how are you going to handle that? That is definitely a reality of teaching that you're definitely going to have students. Like it's going to be hard to manage. Again, classroom management, a whole other animal. But you need to be prepared that you might have to manage a situation within your mock lesson. So that could be a disruptive student. That could be a student faking, fainting. Um, that could be a student that actually gets sick. So there's all these type of scenarios. One thing about the teacher, you know, teachers, you know, it's it's you're new so it's understandable that you might not have those skills yet but you want to show or demonstrate that you can be as unflappable as possible that you can roll with the punches um that you're able to handle those situations gracefully without you know freaking out losing your cool i've done hundreds of observations and and mock lessons there's only been one time where i've actually had to step in and help the teacher so for the most part go with your gut go with your instinct stick to your lesson stick to your plan and all those things will work out okay number seven probably the biggest tip that i could give any teacher potential teacher on their mock lesson is you want to demonstrate or look for those opportunities to be teaching so for example you're in a, you're in a you're in the lesson, you're doing the lesson, you have group work, you're moving around the room, you're sitting with the student, you're, you know, going over something, showing the student, explaining something to the student, showing that you actually know how to teach. That is going to be something that you're really there for. Now, this is, it's hard because one of the things you're going to realize is that teaching is, is something that takes years to really be good at and we understand that as a new teacher you're coming into the room first time maybe the second time or maybe you know you are a seasons teacher and you're able to demonstrate that pretty easily it's still a situation that you're new to the students are new to you you're kind of like jumping in the middle of it you're you're you haven't had the time to set your classroom expectations so it's we understand that it's definitely one of those situations where it's going to be awkward, definitely going to be awkward. However, there are opportunities for you to show off that you do know your content, that you can explain it, that you can, you can differentiate, so to speak, on the spot. Look for kids' learning styles, build rapport with kids. Those are some of the things that I'm going to be looking for. How well you engage the student. Can you get the students you know, to buy into the activity that you're doing? Are you able to manage the situation? I'm a science teacher, so if you're going to come in, you're going to do a science lab. Or does is the group work? You know, work is it is it organized? Is it just some sort of ma massive bit of chaos? So those are some of the things that you want to be aware of. Preparing for classes or doing a mock lesson, in my experience, it's a lot easier to prepare group work than it is to prepare individual work because if you're doing group work, you can actually have. Four, you know, four or five students working on a similar task at a time. It's a little bit easier to manage. So those are some of the things that, that you want to look for when you're doing your mock lesson. You want to look for opportunities to teach, opportunities to show that you can handle classroom management, and opportunities to, you know, to, to show kids that you love your content, you're passionate about it, and you want them to fall in love with it. Okay, number eight, know your content. If you're a history teacher, no history. If you're a science teacher, know your science. 
it's it's really important that you are able to demonstrate that you are the expert in your field, that you're passionate about what you do, that when I, when I send a kid into your class, they're walking out and be like, oh my goodness, that was the best history teacher I've ever had. I love that guy. So definitely, you know, and this is with anything, go in, make sure that you're going into the classroom as, as a representative for your content and, and you really want to be the spark. So it's almost kind of like you're the salesman, so to speak, of that particular subject area. You never know who, what kid in your class is going to be the next great politician you know, from your history class, your next great scientist or your mathematician. You don't know. So you kind of want to be that conduit. Know your content. Okay, number nine. You get, you made it through the lesson. You've, you've demonstrated. You showed how you can know how to teach. You built up some rapport with the kids. How are we wrapping this up? How do, how do I know what the kids were supposed to learn when they were done with this lesson? So that's one of the big pieces. Be aware of that. Understand that that's where you're going. And as with any lesson, what where's what is it you want the kids to know when they walk away from it? Big piece of the puzzle. So. The other thing is, is what is it you know that they're they're going to do with this class? At the end of this class, are they walking away to some sort of um, info? Are they walking out away doing some sort of reflection? Are they walking away to have to do some sort of call to action? Is this the basis for the the, the start of a unit? So have have some idea where this lesson fits into the overall curriculum for the student. Also, you know, the, the what was the point of the lesson? Is there homework? So these are all things that, you know, as teachers, you, you, you get better at it. It's a skill you develop. It is kind of hard in a mock lesson to assign homework. Most kids will be like, yeah, get the heck out of here. I ain't doing no homework from this lady. <laughs> they barely want to do it for the real teacher. They're sure, certainly not going to do it for the fake teacher. But, you know, that being said, it still, under, you know, even if they, you don't assign the homework, Make sure that you have it. The, the administrator might ask you for it. The other piece is, is that you're going to give me this lesson, you know. So hopefully you have some sort of copy of it, some sort of printout, whatever it is. But the, the administrator will probably ask you for this lesson. And, you know, that's, that's one of those things that you definitely want to bring with you when you come to the do your mock lesson. Is a copy of the actual lesson. Everything you did, all the handouts, make sure that that... that who, when you leave the administrator, whoever is hiring you, has a copy of it. Okay, my final tip is make sure you thank everybody. You know, again, like one, you know, it's one of those things that, as any job interview, you want to thank the people that took their time out of their day to either be part of the lesson, to interview you. That is a process, and understand that, especially some teaching jobs. I know here in New York that a single teaching job could have hundreds, hundreds of applicants. Um, the fact that you made it that far and got to a mock lesson is pretty huge. Even if you don't get the job, you did get pretty far along the process and you should be proud of yourself for sure. But you definitely want to thank those people for their time. You, don't not, you do not want to burn any bridges. If they do say, hey, you know, the other thing is, is do get to the next piece, make sure you have your references ready. That will be the next piece of the puzzle. Your references will be needed to be checked, so make sure you have those handy. Okay, so there they are. There's my 10 tips. I hope they're helpful. Congratulations if you made it this far. Let me know how you make out. Listen, you know, it's still one of those things that you never know what an administrator or a school is looking for. You could be a really, really great teacher. You might, it just might not be the best fit for you. You know, don't be discouraged. You know, um, like I was saying, there are some jobs that get hundreds of applicants. The fact that you get far, far along in this process means a lot. It means that you have a ton of potential. Just keep at it. Um, and as always, man, listen, stay tuned. I'll give you more tips, more stuff. Subscribe. Hit the like button. Peace out, everybody.